Hey everyone, ready to jump into some Proxmox file sharing with us today? Always a fun topic. We're tackling that big question you always run into when you're setting up a server. Yeah, yeah. Should you just keep your file share right on the Proxmox host itself? Right. Or do you go all in and set up a separate NAS virtual machine just for that? Mm -hmm. It's a real head scratcher, one that trips up a lot of people. It really is. And you know, the thing is, there isn't one right answer. It all depends on what you're doing, what you need. Exactly. There are so many factors to weigh, right? Absolutely. It's like picking between, I don't know, a Swiss Army knife and a whole toolbox. I like that. They both have their place, but which one's better depends entirely on the job you're trying to do. Exactly. So why don't we start by breaking down that first option, keeping those files directly on the Proxmox host. Okay, sounds good. At first glance, it just seems so much easier. Right. Especially if you're still getting your bearings in Proxmox. It's like keeping all your tools in one drawer, you know? Yeah. Everything right there, easy to find. Absolutely, and that simplicity is a huge plus. Especially if you're just starting out, you don't want to be overwhelmed with complexity, right? Exactly. And for a smaller setup or someone who's new to Proxmox, it's very tempting just to keep everything on that host system. Makes sense. Keeps things nice and tidy, configuration-wise, right? Exactly, everything's all in one place. And I would imagine that keeping file sharing on that host would also be a bit easier on your system resources. That's right. You're not splitting things up between different VMs. So. Yeah. Yeah, resource efficiency is definitely another point in favor of direct sharing. Okay, so we've got simplicity, we've got resource efficiency, mm -hmm. but I'm sensing a but coming here. Oh, well, yeah. There have to be some downsides to this approach. There are always trade-offs with yeah. anything. Right. And one of the biggest ones to think about here is the security aspect. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. In the sysadmin world, there's this principle called separation of concerns. It means each system should ideally have one job and one job only. Gotcha. You wouldn't use a hammer to turn a screw. Right? right. It's about using the right tool for the job. So when you lump multiple services onto one system, especially services that need different levels of access and have different security needs, you just increase the chances that something could go wrong. So if there's a weak point in your file sharing service, and it's running on the same system as your Proxmox management, that could be a recipe for disaster. Exactly. One vulnerability is all it takes. Makes sense. It's like having one key that unlocks your house and your car. Not the best idea. Right? Not at all. So somebody exploits a weakness in your file sharing, boom, that could get into your whole Proxmox host. And that's the last thing we want. Exactly. It's a risk you don't want to take if you can avoid it. Okay. That definitely makes the security concerns much clearer. Now, what about backups? How does keeping everything on the host affect that whole process? That's another really important point to consider. Proxmox is designed for virtual environments, right? Right. So it's backup tools, it's migration tools. Those are great for VMs. Right. But when you're talking about files stored directly on the host, things get a bit more complicated. Really? Yeah. You'd likely need a separate backup solution just for those files, which adds a whole other layer of complexity to manage. Ah, so more to manage, more right. potential for things to go wrong. Yeah, unfortunately. And what about things like upgrades or restoring the host from a backup? Good question. I'd imagine that could really throw a wrench in things if you're doing direct sharing on that host. It definitely could. There's a chance your entire file sharing setup could be disrupted when you do that. Yeah, because you're not just restoring the system itself. You're potentially having to rebuild your whole file sharing configuration from scratch. Yeah, that's right. Ouch. That sounds like a massive headache. It can be. Especially if you're in any kind of time crunch. Mm. So direct sharing on the host, it seems simpler on the surface, but definitely comes with these extra challenges that we need to keep in mind. Definitely keep those in mind. It's true. You know, there are some real downsides to think about with direct sharing. Right. So let's flip the script and talk about that other option, the separate NAS virtual machine. Okay. Yeah. Which I know can sound a little more intimidating up front. Right. But it comes with its own set of advantages that really make it worthwhile. It does. And you mentioned earlier that NAS VM being like its own little fortress inside your Proxmox world. I love that analogy. It really paints a picture. It does. It does. So for our listener who is really focused on that security aspect, mm. how does a separate VM actually make things more secure? Well, remember that whole one system, one purpose idea? I do, yeah. That's what we're doing with the Nauseam. We're isolating it. Okay. Think of it like, I don't know, a separate apartment inside your house. Even if something happens in one, it shouldn't affect the other. So even if there is some kind of vulnerability in your NAS software or somebody manages to get in somehow, 
the damage is limited to that VM. Okay. Your Proxmox host and all your other VMs are still safe and sound. So it's like having, I don't know, a digital moat around your precious data, uh, protecting it from anything that might happen in the main castle. Precisely. And it gives you that peace of mind knowing your core Proxmox environment is protected from whatever might be going on with your file sharing setup. I like it. And what about flexibility? You touched on this earlier, how a NAS VM can give you a little more wiggle room, right? It does. Because if you think about it, migrating a NAS VM is like moving a piece of furniture, right? Okay. You just pick it up, you move it to a different spot, you're done. Easy. It's self-contained, it's portable, you're not ripping apart your whole Proxmox setup if you need to move it. So if I decide to get a fancy new server down the line, or I even want to move to a whole different Proxmox host, I can just bring that NAS VM right along with me. Exactly. You got it. It's like, I don't know, taking your favorite comp feature with you when you move. I like that. No need to leave it behind or get a new one. Yeah. And because it's independent, you can back it up easily. You can restore it if you need to, even clone it if you want another copy. All that without messing with your main Proxmox system at all. So much flexibility. It's like having your cake and eating it too. Right. Right. Exactly. Now, let's talk management a bit. I've heard from folks, even those who aren't command line gurus, that they found managing their NAS through a VM, pretty straightforward. That's right. And this is one of the really cool things is that a lot of these NAS operating systems, they have these really user-friendly web interfaces. Really? Yeah. Okay. So it's like having a nice little control panel for all your data. Mm -hmm. You can manage your shares, users, permissions, all that with just a few clicks. You don't have to be a command line expert. That is a relief. The command line can be a little intimidating, even for folks who've been doing this a while. I hear you, but these NAS operating systems, they're designed to be easy to use. You get the power and the flexibility of a dedicated NASOS, but without needing to be a command line wizard. Okay, so this is sounding almost too good to be true. There have to be some downsides to this whole NAS VM paradise, right? Well, you know, every rose has its thorns, as they say. Right. And one of the main drawbacks here is the overhead that comes with running another virtual machine. Remember that marathon we talked about? Oh, yeah, yeah. Even though our NAS VM is its own runner, it's still drawing resources from that Proxmox host. Right. Like, even if they're carrying a lighter load, they still need water. They yeah. still need snacks to keep going. Right. Exactly. So it's going to need some CPU power, some memory, some storage space, especially if you've got lots of files, lots of users. And if your server is already kind of maxed out, adding a dedicated NAS VM could be pushing it a little too far. Don't overload things. Right. Exactly. Work within those constraints. And, you know, speaking of balancing things... There's also just the added complexity of managing another system. Oh, uh, right, yeah. Even though that NAS VM is isolated, it's still its own separate operating system, which means you need to maintain it, update it, keep an eye on it. Like a pet. It's like exactly. getting another pet, right? Exactly. You got to feed it, take it to the vet, all that good stuff. And speaking of things that can be a little tricky, there's this thing called drive pass-through, which can be a bit of a hurdle for some people. Drive pass-through. Now, that rings a bell, but refresh my memory here. What is that again? Yeah. So drive pass-through lets your NAS VM talk directly to those physical hard drives in your Proxmox server. Okay. So it's bypassing that usual virtualization layer that Proxmox uses. It's like giving your VM the keys to the storage kingdom. So instead of the NAS VM going through Proxmox to get to the storage, it's got a direct line. Exactly. And that can make a big difference, especially for performance. Okay, how so? When that NAS VM can access the hard drives directly, you often get much faster read and write speeds for your files. And that can be really important for a smooth file sharing experience. So it's like a dedicated express lane just for your file transfers. No more traffic jams. Exactly. And for a lot of people, that performance boost is worth the extra effort of setting up drive pass through. Okay. But you did say it can be tricky. It can be. It's a little more technical. You'll need to configure both your Proxmox host and your NAS VM to make sure they're both playing nicely with those pass through drives. It's maybe not for the faint of heart. It can be a little intimidating, especially if you're not super comfortable digging into those settings and configurations. All right. So we've got our resource usage, added complexity, this whole drive pass through thing. It's sounding like both of these approaches have their strength. They have their weaknesses. And our listeners got a real decision on their hands. It's almost like choosing between different vacations, right? Tough. Well, direct sharing. It's like that quick weekend getaway. Simple, easy to plan, doesn't break the bank maybe not as many thrills. Right, right. And then a NAS VM, 
That's like your big adventure vacation. Yeah. It takes more planning, might cost a bit more, but you're in for a really unique experience. I like that. And just like choosing your vacation style, the right approach here depends on what you're looking for. So for our listeners who are probably thinking, okay, what do I do now? Right. What are some of those big questions they should be asking themselves to help make this decision? Yeah, it can be a lot to take in. It really can. But here's the thing. Start with your data. Okay. What are you actually going to be storing? Are we talking family photos, your movie collection? Right. Or is this critical business data sensitive personal information? Okay, yeah. Because if security is top priority, a NASVM with that extra isolation, it's going to be really tempting. It's like putting your data in a suit of armor. Right. Exactly. Right. And then think about those hardware resources we talked about. How much CPU power do you have to spare? How much memory, storage space? Right. Can you dedicate some to file sharing without impacting all your other Proxmox VMs? Right. Because if your server is already running full steam ahead, adding a NAS VM on top of that might be too much. Too much, yeah, like trying to cram one too many people into a phone booth. Not comfortable. Not at all. And here's another big one people don't always think about. How comfortable are you with the command line? Okay, yeah, good point. If you need to troubleshoot things on your own, how do you feel about that? Right, because if you're more of a set it and forget it kind of person, right. direct sharing might be a better way to start. That might be, yeah. If you're not really into digging around in the command line, start simple. Okay. And remember, even if you do start with direct sharing, if you realize down the road you need that extra security of a NAS VM, you can always migrate. Oh, okay. So you're not stuck. You're not stuck, exactly. That's good to know. It's all about what works best for you right now and knowing you've got options if things change. Right. So as we wrap things up here, what's the big takeaway for our listeners? What's that one thing we want them to remember as they head out into the world of Proxmox file sharing? The biggest thing is there's no one right answer. It's all about making informed choices. Love it. So think about everything we talked about today, the pros, the cons. Think about what you're comfortable with, what you need your server to do, and then make the choice that works for you. It's about finding that balance, right, between keeping things simple, keeping things secure, and making sure your system can actually handle it all. Exactly. And no matter what you choose, remember, the Proxmox community is out there. Oh, yeah. Tons of resources, tons of support. Always happy to help. So go forth, set up your file sharing, and build the Proxmox server of your dreams. Exactly. That's it for our deep dog today. We hope this helped clear up any confusion around Proxmox file sharing. Until next time, happy virtualizing, everyone.